guys walking past that. Okay, so for the actual drawing today, what are we doing? So last week, we had this cool idea, and I think I still have the drawing from last week, but essentially it was this creature made entirely of arms. That was my initial concept that I wanted to create. Oh, here it is. And as I worked it with you guys, we there was a, a pull, and at one point this was going to be like an oar, as if it was like this giant creature that was entirely made of arms. But then as it kept evolving and our story kept growing, because I feel like we did this together, all of a sudden the oops, the hands then became more of like a treasure chest that is caught behind this facade of an arm. And then we were thinking, okay, what if every arm has or every hand has a keyhole. And then I was like, okay, they can have keyholes, but I want there to be a purpose. I don't want them to have keyholes with or anything in my art that has symbols without any meaning. I feel like just makes it void of emotion. So I was like, we have to come up with a reason why there's keyholes. So then you guys had the idea of well, what if the keyhole or what if this creature is a thief and every arm essentially is holds whatever that arm stole in its lifetime, or it could unlock the treasures that that arm or whoever that person that that arm belonged to held very dear to them. So then this idea started rotating into the idea of, well, okay, what if you would go meet this collector person, whatever we're going to call him, and you would, he would have a key ring and he would have all the keys for all the hands that he holds. And on this key ring, uh, oh no, and then there would be a platform of hands leading up to this creature and you would have to pick a key. And if you pick the right key, you would unlock all the things that that hand stole or whatever that hand held. But if you chose the wrong key, the creature would then take one of your arms and add it to his growing collection. So it's this very large, bizarre creature that's kind of faceless and nameless. And I like the idea of you can't even see the face. It's just a mask that's held up by these arms. So it's almost like I like the idea of the arms like found or this creature found a mask and it just kind of props it up to act as a placeholder for when people come to visit him. So this weekend, my thumbnail, if you guys can kind of make it out, essentially this is the mask and then these are the arms that are holding the mask up from like all those different angles, like this way. And then it has these two really giant arms that are kind of the prominent ones. And that's why I made them a little darker. And those are holding the key ring that have just a ton of keys on the ring itself. And then down here, if you can kind of see, it's all these arms kind of like pushing forward, creating a platform. And then there's a little silhouette down here for someone to stand on. So the trick about what uh, this drawing is going to encompass and what I want to create with this is a drawing that has a ton of arms, a ton of hands from edge to edge that we create together. Cause this whole story, I feel like I cannot take credit for. I feel like a lot of it was you guys kind of suggesting these ideas. And I want to play around with that more on my Twitch channel where we, I feel like I'm creating something with you guys. And then when we look at it, we'll be like, ah, oh, yeah, like that's the thing that I suggested or, oh, that's my actual arm. And that leads me to where my next thing if you want an arm depicted in this drawing, I already saw some on the Discord channel, but please send them to me and I will be doing my best to include as many as I can that fit the right areas. Because as you can see, it's like we have a lot of arms holding something up. We have a lot of arms holding these two giant arms and then a lot of arms holding up this platform down here. And then the rest will essentially be kind of filler arms. Um, I'm sure I want to create something like wings or something coming off the body, but it's all arms. And we're just gonna have fun with it. I thought of maybe including some kind of a fabric or like ornate um, decorative stuff around them, but I'm kind of like, ah, I almost want this to be made entirely of arms, but I'm not completely closed off to the idea of adding that later. So for now, I think for this stream today, I'm just gonna draw a bunch of arms and then we'll go from there. But I want to keep this very open, very fluid. So if you guys have any suggestions while I'm drawing or any ideas, let me know and we'll be sure to incorporate it somehow if we feel it fits best as a community together. Okay, let me answer any questions before we go and uh, jump into drawing hands. 
So Gang says, just realize you have a backdrop mount. Kind of. Yeah, it's empty and black, but eventually it'll be filled with stuff. Uh, Fem says, what is the name of that mermaid book? It's called Stick Your Head in the Water. <laughs> By Kate May, I believe is the name. So Kate May Art. Uh, Sean, girl Sean says, I love that you're doing shoutouts for others. I never want to not do that. I feel like I was able to get a platform when I was younger and I was 21 and CG Cookie gave me this platform to be seen and heard. And I want to make sure that I am continuing that, um, that thread because the younger artists I find inspire me more than the older artists because they're, cre they're creatively experimenting with this unknown style that they haven't called home yet. And you oftentimes see artists that are more experienced or established, they find a little comfort zone bubble and they just stay in that. And yeah, it's beautiful work technically, but I feel like creatively it's just slacking. And it that always is something that scares me and I never want to be considered an artist that does that. So that's why even with this, I, I want to challenge myself to try something new. And I think storytelling is something that I want to incorporate more in my work. And um, even with these hands, I really want to make sure each hand feels unique and different. So that's another thing that I'm going to challenge myself with this. But I hope you guys, if you're drawing alongside me or if you're an artist as well, never forget to give credit to other people. And it's very foolish to think that we've accomplished all of what we've done in our lives, in our career, on our own. I very much attribute a lot of the people on my journey, on my path, as the reason of why I feel successful in my career today. So yeah, I'll never stop shouting out for other artists. Uh, Jim says, I'm reading a book which I think you said you read before called You Are a Badass. And the author says, when you choose to make big changes in your life, the universe's big snooze throws everything at you to try to stop you from changing your life. Exactly. Is this phenomenon real in your experience? Did anything happen to you when you decided to jump ship and go totally independent? Yeah, actually. It was like my... Uh, what was this called? The furnace broke on me. And like, that was a good challenge. And I guess without giving too much of the story away, essentially I did an original that next day to help pay for the furnace. And the, the feedback that I got from people and the support that I got was just amazing. And it was like one of those tests where it was like, Ooh, I'm independent. I can't rely on a salary. I don't have a con for a month and a half. I don't really have much money. And that the original that I did that was based off of the furnace, it was called blind rage. And that drawing sold within like an hour and that helped pay for the furnace. And that helped me cement the idea that when something is thrown your way, like a challenge or a speed bump or a hurdle, whatever analogy or metaphor you want to call it, see it as an opportunity to rise and overcome it. So yeah, that was, I guess, my first like experience of right away quitting my job. Something really bad happened. Um, hey, Tigel, glad to see you're here for the stream today. And Adrian says, it was so nice to meet you at Photocon. It was great meeting you too. I am, I'm always really excited to see uh, the people that come to the cons that are actually come to my, my quit, Twitch streams. Okay, now let's get into it. So I tried to find some references of hands. And I think my all-time favorite as of right now is actually Muka. And if you look at even the hand on the cover, I think it's just such a strong, it's like realistic, but stylized and minimal, yet complicated. And this hand, I think it still stands as one of my favorite hands ever. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of flip through. And if there's any hands that I feel inspired by or feel like they would work well in the composition I'm working on, I'm gonna do like a quick rough of what that hand would look like in this drawing. And Last week I did references of my own hands, but since I want to kind of quick draw these, I don't want to take too much time drawing only like 10 of them. I want to draw like 30 if we can get this going right. Because I only stream for two hours and I want to make sure I can make the most of the time here. So I'm going to keep them really quick, really sketchy, and I'm not going to... I'm trying to light down so you can see the hands better. And I'm not going to try to overemphasize just one hand. Maybe next week I'll like do a full render of like one hand or maybe a, like one to three just to show you how I would go about rendering a hand. But I think a lot of people struggle with just the foundation of the hand, which is something that I want to tackle today. Uh, 
Okay. And since Muka is just so good at hands, I don't feel that it would be too hard flipping through this book to find a hand that I would like and that I would want to incorporate in the drawing. I mean, I usually say you should take reference pictures of your own hands for your drawings, but since these are so rough, I think I'm just gonna block things in and then I'm gonna go ahead and take photos of my own hand to get the final details and kind of exasperated veins and uh, the fun details after. Now the other thing I wanna make sure I'm doing is leaving room for the arms because as much as I would love a drawing just filled entirely with hands, I feel like the arms create a really cool line of action to direct the viewer's attention to where we want it. So a lot of this going on here are like arms that are holding this giant arm. So I wanna make sure, actually maybe I'll go ahead and block some of that in. Because then a lot of the arms here, I'm gonna kinda leave um, open. I right, thank you Metroplex for following. So like even though there might be a lot of arms kind of like like having that weight of gravity push there, I want a lot of the arms here to just be kind of loose. And if you've never seen Muka, I guess I really should show some of the examples I'm doing here. So his hands, I think, are just soft and refined without being overly detailed. But he has such a way with nuances that I wanna do my best to capture the same way he captures those nuances. And then for these arms down here, the ones that are holding the mask, And let me know if you guys want me to zoom in more or if you kind of like seeing more of the beast from a little further away. I'm not too particular either way. I just don't know if you guys want to see more of like a close up or if you kind of like the, the distance. Okay, these I'm kind of making up, but I feel like I've drawn hands so often that I can at least block something in that feels pretty accurate, and then I can go back later and uh, touch it up if I feel like it needed some extra help. The other thing with all the hands near the face is I feel like I want it to be really complicated around the ring of the face, but then they have a lot of these arms that create, once again, those action lines that I'm talking about. And I think balancing that's gonna be my biggest challenge in this drawing, because I'm definitely known to work without composition in mind. And it's a fault that I recognize of my own work that I need to be a little more observant of and catch myself when I feel I am, I'm not working um, with composition in mind. Ooh, there's like hands that are kind of crossed.
Um, Girl Sean says, what kind of paper are you using or do you have a supply list? Um, I should create a supply list, but today I am currently working on Strathmore Bristol Board. And it is a smooth surface at 11 by 14 inches and 100 pound weight. Now another thing that I want to do for each of these hands is have a keyhole on the back. So I'm going to be very, I guess, acutely aware of making sure that those aren't forgotten. And kind of prominent too. And sometimes like I'll turn to a page and I'm going to be looking at a lot of reference stuff. I even have like uh, hands that are detached from the figures that I have. I have this statue whose hand I'm going to be working with as well. I just find with hands it's just easier to work with reference than without. It's not to say that you, you shouldn't try drawing hands without reference, but at least for me, I feel like they definitely have more of those realistic touches that I'm looking for when I actually have a hand reference in front of me. <laughs> also, if you can't tell, I just think Mooka is a genius. It's one of those things where trust the masters in their craft because they knew what they were doing and they were very good at it. Um, Metroplex says, do you know if pins from last year's October are still in transit? I haven't received mine yet. If you are local, then yes, we sent all those out. But if you are international, those are going to be sent either this weekend or next week. It kind of depends since we're hiring a bunch of people to help us finish them since there were like 300 international ones and it's going to cost me and Key close to like seven grand. So we were holding it off till we had the right amount of money saved and, uh, I guess, help to help us do it quickly as possible. And it's, it's one of those things where we already have the list for next year, but we feel bad promoting or do anything with it because we haven't finished sending all those out. So definitely know that it's not something we've forgotten and it's something that we want to take uh, care of very soon. Also, I'm going to eventually get it to where I can play the free music in my streams. Because I feel like since I'm going to do a lot more drawing, more than talking, at least for the next month or two, I want to just have something that's nice and calming to listen to in the background. That way it's not just dead silence when I'm not talking. Now, I actually am not sure what I'm going to do with the face. A part of me wants to do like a marble looking, realistic looking face and then maybe with like a slight smile. Still not quite sure yet. So if you guys have any ideas, I'm definitely down to hear it. Mm -hmm. I do want hands like interacting with one another too. Uh, Tabrado says, when rendering the hands, do you usually do the wrinkles or the shadows from the muscle structure? Um, 
I feel like I'm looking for the outer edge and where like there's little bumps and divots. And I'm trying my best to capture those more than anything. Because I know with like wrinkles and underlying anatomy, like I can get that in the detailing stage. Now that's not to say that's how I always do hands. I think if my approach was more value based, I would definitely think of it more in like blocks or a very more, much more of a formal structure. But for this one, since I'm trying to have it be more of a foundation that I can work from, and since I trust myself with my line work, I'm definitely approaching it with more of a, I guess, refined edge work. And once again, I'm, I'm not saying that this is the right way to go about doing it. I just want to have fun with this drawing. And right now, this is the way that I think I would have the most fun. So yeah, I guess I look for the outer edge when I do hands a lot. And I do want there to be kind of a gradient going out from these hands up here to just give more focus to the hand on the top. Here's a made up hand. And you'll see that all the time where I feel like I'm bouncing between these kind of made up hands and then these real hands. Um, who do I have to sleep with to get that list early digital? Oh, what list are you talking about? Oh, draw Tober. Um, you know what? Maybe as a special treat, I'll ask Key if she thinks it's okay, but maybe we'll post it on Discord for those of you who are interested in looking at the draw Tober list early in case maybe you want to start generating ideas quicker and that way when Drawtober happens, you can just go for it. Yeah, I'm definitely down for that idea. And smear so funny too. I feel like they can be so expressive with like just m the movement of like one or two fingers. So, you know, the problem is I don't want so many overlapping that we get kind of this awkward look to the hand. So what will most likely happen is I will then come after and draw like more hands on top. It's not where it, so that we're not getting these awkward looking hands. Also directions of hands are very interesting for this piece too. Because we're going to be kind of telling the viewer where we want them to look at based on the direction, the movement of these hands. And I want to be conscious that I'm pushing them in the direction that I actually want them to be going in. And it, if 
there's another reason I want to draw a lot of hands. I guess it's one, to challenge myself. But two, I feel like hands are one of those things that are kind of known in the art world as being like really difficult to draw. And I kind of want to prove that, hey, if you just draw a lot of them and just like keep practicing, they're really not that hard. And not only are they not hard, but they're actually a lot of fun to draw. But I think it's this intimidation that surrounds hands. And I hope that today, even with like the stream to show you like how quickly I'm just blocking them out. I'm not worrying about how perfect they are, or how completely accurate proportionally they are. I'm more concerned with like how they read and if they read well. Because a more interesting hand, I would take over a proportionally accurate one any day of the week. Yes, Sean says that, girl Sean says, hands are just as expressive as faces too. I agree. Totally agree to that. Ooh, I like, there's like these hands holding. I'm going to definitely try to do my best to get that. Femme says, maybe you can release the calendar in a few weeks or days. So, for example, for the next month, you give away the prompt for of one draw October day. Yeah, I I think it would be good to release a list earlier. Because I know there's some artists like, well, myself, since I'm hosting draw October, hosting it actually takes a lot more work than I thought it would. And I learned that last year, and I went to Europe thinking I could do both. Definitely not um, something I, I definitely want to avoid for this year. So I'm going to start some of them early because hosting them is a job in itself, and I want to make sure I do a good job hosting as well as do a good job participating in the challenge. And for anyone that doesn't know what Drawtober is, it's basically one of those drawing challenges you hear about where every day you draw something new based on the prompt that's um, given on a calendar. Sorry, I have like the hiccup stay or something. And uh, me and my roommate, Key, Gawky online and uh, artist Deandra Pop Art, all three of us host it together. And last year we kind of had this crazy surge of people joining it, and I guess I wasn't expecting that many people. On day one, we had uh, just under 2,000 people submit for day one. And if you can imagine, my I remember Deandra said she's never seen me, or no, Sean says. Uh, he's never seen me more stressed in my life because I didn't even do my drawing that day and I was trying to like look through 2,000 drawings to figure out who I wanted to uh, promote that day. And we ended up splitting it where Key will do Twitter and then me and Deandra will split Instagram together. So this year I'm coming way more prepared. I have a better idea of how many people will participate and that will help me um, do a better job at hosting. So expect a lot of good changes this year in terms of myself and knowing how to host it better. Why thank you Bewitch Pixels for following. Um, what am I using for reference? I'm currently using Gustav Klimt's the wor or sorry, the world of Mooka, the works of Mooka kind of collector all together in one image. Now a lot of people know him for his Art Nouveau, but I like him for his subtlety and his, especially in his hands. He has such a good way and good work with hands that I think goes not completely unnoticed, but for me, I feel it's understated how good his hands are. That's why I wanted to use him as my first kind of reference. 
but I'm not like copying it directly. A lot of these I'm using is like, oh yeah, there's a bump there or oh, there's a wrinkle in that area. Because oftentimes I think my, my brain wants to draw hands that are like too sleek and smooth. And I don't want to do hands like that. I want to do hands that are very unique and expressive. And they have like this subtle beauty to the wrinkles and anomalies. So that's kind of the goal. Ooh, I just saw like a pocket here and I'm like, oh, let's have one arm that's like maybe palm side up. In a lot of these hands, I'm kind of purposely making over expressive. I kind of like the idea of these hands each trying to like allure, allure, allure the viewer into wanting them to pick them when they pick their key to be unlocked. Because remember, each of these are going to have keyholes on them. I guess I should do a better job at displaying some of them. So every now and then, like I'll come across, like this hand, I think I did a really bad job. And that'll happen. Just erase it. Beauty of working with graphite. An extra beauty of if you're working digitally, you just control Z it. Or use your eraser tool and just get rid of it completely. And try again. I always tell people the only mistake you can actually make in art is to give up. Everything else is just a change of opinion and like a change of mind. Like, ah, uh, no, I don't actually like how that looks. Let me change it. But if you get to the point where you're like, oh, this is terrible, I'm going to give up, then that's when you actually lose. So don't do not do that to yourselves. Um, a area, Aria from Denmark, and no, we don't have cupcake factories, <laughs> says, reminds me a bit of Bayonetta Angels. I actually don't know Bayonetta's Angels. I may have to look them up. I never played Bayonetta, so I actually don't know. see here. I'm almost thinking like for, I kind of like what's going on here. It's like creating this almost shoulder piece. But now I almost want some arms that are like on this really big arm. We'll see, let me let me try one and see if I like it. I thank you, Rebecca, artist, for following. Yeah, I kind of like it. I feel like I should have more arms. Okay, this one I'm going to totally just make up. That are also holding this arm in place. I almost like the other idea of like this creature can't even hold the, these giant arms. There's these other arms that are coming to kind of hold it up or like help prop it up. Ooh, I kind of like having this a more dainty arm up here. I hate this eyeball, by the way. <laughs> Every time I look at the Twitch stream, I'm like, oh, I hate that, how that looks. We're going to keep it more elusive for the time being. So 
sometimes I get, I notice I get to a point when drawing hands that I start making like really sloppy, lazy mistakes. And usually that's a good reminder of like, oh, I should take a break or I should do something else. But since we're live, I'm going to push through, as they say. This arm will also be a little bigger. So if you are going to send me a hand to draw in this drawing, just make sure it kind of fits somewhere of the directions. So like, don't give me a hand that's just like perfectly straight out like this. Try to give it some curvature and I'll do my best to incorporate it somewhere. See how weird it is already. Just like control all these arms. So I think then in the back. Actually, where's my thumbnail? Yeah, I think I want a lot of the arms coming from like this general direction. Sometimes I'll give myself like little lines essentially. I, almost, I do want some hands coming off here. I feel like this is creating too much of a, a flat line here. Why, thank you, Hoozy. Oh, I could not see that fast enough, but thank you for following. I think this hand has to go. I think I need more hands that are going straight out here. Yeah. I think so. But yeah, how are you guys doing? I feel like sometimes when I get too serious in my drawings, I, I get very quiet. I want to make sure that since I'm streaming, I'm actually talking. I want to make sure I get some hands here as well.
There we go. And like some of the lines that I'm creating, I feel like I don't have control over. So I'm just going to have to kind of fake it and let some hands that maybe I'd, I feel like, ah, I just don't like the lines I create. I can do my best to fix them, but I feel like there will be just some that they, they just fit um, pretty pretty well. So I don't want to just force something uh, in because I don't like the, the shape language that they're creating. Sometimes it's good to have a little more awkwardness to the shapes. Because I don't want them to all be like these perfect hands. I think in my drawing, The Silent King, if you guys have seen it, it's definitely another armed creature, but all those arms look very similar and kind of doing very simple positions. And with this one, I want to make sure that I'm doing both. Okay, I'm going to switch on to a new reference so I don't all make all my hands look like Mooka. Uh, I brought some more references, and actually there was a drawing that I got from this book called Enchanted Chest that I thought would fit perfect as reference. It is this guy. Like this key ring that has just all these keys on it. Like that's kind of the look that I'm going for the key ring that will be working there. Let's see here. Who is another artist I pulled from for reference? Eliza Ivanova, who I think is an amazing artist with graphite. So let's see if I can get inspired with some of their bumps and nuances. So even like this, I might, I'm inspired by that. Obviously my hand won't look that, like that, but I can get inspired by the way it looks. You know, maybe I'll turn, maybe that's the problem right now with this drawing. I feel like I'm looking at it from only one angle. I really should be looking at it from a few. Hmm. Oh, I kind of like the idea. Oops. Nope, that's not a freckle. I kind of like the idea of these like hands that are like laying hands over this creature. If you guys know what I mean. It's like it's creating like this weird like hood on top. I thank you, Russell Barnes, for following. Maybe I'll take some reference photos of these hands. But I kind of know the idea that I'm going for. So I think, you, can you guys see that? So I almost want to take this one out, even though I like that hand. Create more of like... A swooshiness the top here yeah um fem says maybe you can add some arms reaching to the viewers pos possessions Hmm. It's like actually reaching at them. That would be interesting. Why, thank you, I Grey Wolf, for following. Let's see if... You know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see if I can do more exaggerated hands here. Let's look at Wiley Beckert. If you guys know... If you don't know who she is, you should. Wiley's a fantastic artist. And her hands are also... Very prominent and very, very much like a vocal point for her. I feel like that's kind of what I'm looking to do here as well. I 
So besides all these arms, It's, it's interesting when you draw a lot of the same subject matter, you almost get like, not necessarily bored, but you want to like try it to make things new and interesting, but it, it just becomes increasingly difficult the more that you draw them. So for me, like I want to make sure each hand feels expressive and unique, but after you draw, I mean, I've drawn like, what, 20 some now? And already I can start to feel that, ooh, like, oh, make sure they're still interesting. It's like that nagging at the back of my head. You can see how like these arms kind of create this secondary, almost like a sunflower <laughs> shape around the head, which I kind of like. It's like pulling from the idea that it's almost cute, but at the same time, it's disturbing. I'm sure it doesn't help that I don't have the hands actually holding anything. So it makes me have to really play I'm gonna stop working with reference for a second. I think I gotta do some blind arms for a, a bit here. Let me look at that in questions. Um, how am I? I'm doing great. Like now that I'm actually drawing, I'm feeling amazing. I mean, I was so stressed out, but I think a lot of it had to do with the fact that I wasn't drawing. Now that I am, I'm like, yeah. Like I remember why I like doing this so much process of drawing, I just find not only relaxing, but very therapeutic on many levels for myself. And I'm sure a lot of you guys feel maybe not exactly the same, but similar in a sense. Uh, Luva asks, what is my Hogwarts house? I wish I could say I was a Hufflepuff, and a lot of people probably think I'm a Gryffindor, but I actually got put into Ravenclaw. And that is the truth. Um, Aria says, have you seen Maquina when the promised flower blooms? No. I'm going to write that down, though, because I try to watch a new movie every day. Maquina. The promised flower blooms. I will look that up. Uh, Maria says, do you think people, well, thank you, whoever just followed too, by the way. Uh, Maria says, do you think people are the hardest subject matters to draw? I found animals are easier to draw than people for me. I still like human subjects the best, though. Um, this one will definitely vary. Like, for me, environments are extremely tough, especially hard surface anything. So, like, pretty much anything in the sci-fi category would be a struggle for me. But for some people, it's like a walk in the park. They can do it with their eyes closed. So that's one of those that... It will vary, but for me personally, I think people, especially a very symmetrical, quote-unquote, attractive person is the hardest thing to draw because you're playing to a lot of people's uh, relative opinion and it's very subjective and people are very critical on what an attractive person looks like. And not only that, but I feel like if you mess up with like proportions or anatomy, it's very obvious, but with animals or with especially fantastical things, you can get away with not having it fit a specific proportion and no one will call you out on it. But on this one, let's say I have some hands that just don't look right, I'll very much get called out for it and I'll have kind of a, um, they, they will probably be right because there's actual physical anatomical proof of what an arm looks like and if mine just breaks it it'll just look off so yeah i definitely think people that draw animals get away a little more with not being called out as much unless if someone's like really into animals they'll know but otherwise 
I do list people as being a harder one to draw, but that's for me personally. That's not for every artist. And I think like if you were to ask yourself the same question, you would know instantly like, oh yeah, that for me is the hardest. Okay, I'm going to try to create some of this forward movement here. And then I'm going to let the backdrop become more of this backdrop here and create kind of a secondary sunflower. Because I really want, I mean, I almost want to, I don't know. I'm going back and forth on if I even like this arm here. So maybe I'll come back to it. Let's see, where else can I focus on then? And then down here, you can kind of see how I have this other set of platform. Thank you, Germano, for following. Where it's like all these arms kind of like sticking out a platform for a figure to stand on. And I want the figure to be... Kind of smaller, actually. Maybe I'll make them really small. At first, I was going to make them a little bigger, but now I'm like, you know what? Let's play with scale. Let's do the trend that Shadow of the Colossus kind of started. Because <laughs> I've never really done it for myself. And for this figure to really pop, I'm going to make it... I might even make it silhouette completely to be like this glowing orb. And then let the hands around it be very dark. see here let's make it a bit darker who knows maybe I won't make it super contrasty like I do everything else nope never mind I take that back I definitely will make it super contrasty the thought fluttered in my mind for a second then I shot it down why thank you x deathly shrick x for following you know what I'm gonna lift the camera up Ooh, sorry if that was loud guys I'm gonna lift the camera up just so it's easier to see a lot of oh, this drawing. Why, thank you, uh, TK Ninjas. Sorry, I can't give more. It's all I have at the moment. Keep up the good work. No, thank you. Honestly, I don't do these streams for money or monetary gain. This is more for like staying active with the community and drawing with uh, you guys. And like this drawing wouldn't exist or like this idea wouldn't exist if I didn't stream and these ideas that. Uh, came out of last week's stream so to me this is like creative fuel and honestly i like talking with you guys i like answering questions uh <laughs> the girl sean says what is your mug it's supposed to be a manatee <laughs> and then on the inside it says oh the humanity <laughs> um eric says are you gonna draw a beautiful or an ugly face I want to draw as neutral of a face as possible, which I know sounds really bizarre. But essentially, imagine if it was like this. Maybe even less gender specific. I want it to be this very, 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 very neutral mask. And you can't tell if it's smiling or frowning. And I like the idea that when you come up to this creature, it is emotionless. It is void of any direction of wanting you to either get it right or wrong. It just does not care. And I think my favorite type of villains, quote unquote villains, are the ones that just seem very neutral. They don't have this underlying, I want to destroy humanity or I want to kill the world. And um, they stay very neutral about everything. But if bad things happen, they don't care. If good things happen, they don't care. And I think those are like the most threatening of all the type of creatures out there. Because what we really care about then becomes super insignificant to them. And it's just like, crazy juxtaposition especially in like a fantasy adventure or even like think like spirited away i mean in a lot of ways 
each of those villains weren't actually villains. And I think No Face is a really good example how his intentions did not match up with pretty much any character in that movie. And when he started to kind of lose it because being in the bathhouse drove him a little crazy, you you got to see like him come down from this weird high that he was experiencing and then he became more of a good guy again. And I like that. I think that's why Spirit Away stay, stuck with me so much is because it doesn't have this set line in the sand of you're a good guy, you're a bad guy. It, there was no line. And even Yubaba in the end kind of became not necessarily a good guy, but kind of neutral. And she stayed pretty neutral throughout the entire film, which is another great thing. Okay. Let's see here. Yeah, this arm be a little darker. lower um oops Luva says what if you do a mask without mouth like all the expressiveness is in the hands and it doesn't eat because all the strength comes from getting more arms well that's interesting I mean I, d I like the idea of this being a mask though so it's not actually the creature's face you'll never actually see the creature you'll only see its hands and arms Um, hey, Eddie. Um, Femme says the mask kind of reminds me of No Face. Well, good. Because I would definitely put that as like a prominent inspiration in my own life. Uh, Digital says, I got to go. Going to take a nice hot bath and then hit the hay. Well, good night, Digital. Thanks for stopping by. And hello, FBLTs. I'm glad you were able to make it. almost like I want to take more reference photos for the hands down here because they're so oddly specific. Oh, you know what? I think I do have some on my phone because I took some earlier. Yeah, so this is a good example of like me taking reference photos of my own arms and hands. Let me go ahead and find a couple. I also want to have a lot of hands intersecting one another. Too often I make the mistake of having them be separate and kind of isolated from one another. And I find that it's far more interesting to have things intersect in a drawing. So if you kind of find yourself doing that where everything has its own plane to work on, just, just give it a try mixing them and like putting something in front of another thing. So if like you have a character whose hand is holding a staff, maybe have them holding the staff in front of their body or something. And you'll see that that interaction between the two subject matters can be really interesting to draw. other hand over here. I'm definitely not afraid to touch the edge. Something I actually want to accomplish with this drawing is having more edge to edge. Uh, 
Um, Thun says, maybe the mask has some cracks for every time someone actually got the key right and the creature lost that treasure arm. Hmm. Maybe the creature will die when enough people guess the right arms. Here's some more good arms here. So I definitely want these arms like holding the arms in front of it. Pull this back. And honestly, I have these like kind of defined looking arms <laughs> when I'm like uh, holding them a little harder. So I want to make sure to capture that because I like those little nuances. See, here's another time where I can just feel myself getting quiet because I'm trying to concentrate. Sorry, you guys. Let me find a question. Maybe I'll talk. Um, Eric says, maybe I remember wrong, but a lot of neutral characters in movies smile, but they always give you an untrustworthy impression. So they gain, gain passive villain vibes. Very true. Thank you, Co something Cooper. I'm sorry I missed that one. But thank you for following. Um, absolutely, yeah. Uh, I just find those characters to be so much more compelling and interesting because their motives are unclear. And you're kind of like, are they good? Are they bad? And it's like something that you question throughout the entire viewing experience. And then oftentimes it's not even answered ever, honestly. All of these will have keyholes. Okay, let's find some more poses that I did. It's definitely going to be a, a mess of just hands that are flat on each other right here. Oh, I guess something, if you guys are, if any of you have played Hollow Knight, that's something I've been playing, or I was playing on the plane to Otakon and back, and um, I really like it. It's a fun little game. I think sometimes the frustration actually doesn't pay off. Like, I know the whole Dark Souls style thing has become very trendy, and I would say most of the times I understand why it works, 
But I think in this game, there are times where the frustration actually becomes so much because a boss, a lot of the times it's like, if you jump at the right time, it's like almost luck based. Um, the villain won't hit you or the, the boss that you're fighting. And I, I kind of don't like games where it's not skill based in certain fights. It's very much luck based. And though those kind of drive me nuts because I'm like, well, I don't feel like I died fairly and then I have to go like find my body and then in the boss battles where I do feel like it was my fault I'll take blame I'll be like you know what yeah I didn't I didn't do it right I know that that was my fault I'll take blame for it but then some of them where you're like I, I literally couldn't do anything like those sometimes frustrate me but besides that I think it's a really good game and then Overcooked 2 is everything that I wanted from a video game <laughs> and in, uh, just to warn you guys be careful playing with your friends. You can easily get very frustrated uh, with them playing that game. And I think that's kind of the point. So as soon as you can kind of feel that things are getting heated, maybe just take a break. You know, go do something else for a little bit. Because that game will test friendships. I'll just say that. Do -do -do. Um... Mighton, hey, how's it going? It says, is this going to be one of your Instagram giveaways or this was solely for the stream? Um, solely for the stream, but um, yeah, maybe I'll do like a print giveaway or like I'll send someone a free copy because this will be a big print. And I really want to put gold on, ooh, I could either put it on like some of the key holes or some of the actual keys. I don't know, I'll have to think about that one a little bit more. Now with some of these arms, I'm definitely like kind of doing placeholder lines. So I know like, oh yeah, if, I don't want to call too much attention to this area. That's okay. Because you can see how many arms we already have going on. How much time do I have left? Oh, I only have a half hour left? Oh my gosh. I didn't realize this has been going that fast. Oh my gosh. Okay. I got to kick it into overdrive then. Um, let me draw some fun hands here. Maybe there's like a couple that are like reaching towards the person that's standing. It's kind of a creepy sense to it. Oh, what if like these hands were holding up, it's almost like a bridge, you know? kind of interesting right <laughs> I mean I'm getting I can just tell I'm getting delirious from drawing so many arms already So obviously playing with contrast is going to be huge for this area for me to not lose focus and become overwhelmed or overwhelm the viewer. So I think having a lot of these arm lines essentially will like point the viewer in the right direction.
And like when drawing arms, I try not to have like perfectly straight arms. So you can even see the, like the warbly wobbleness of this arm, but it actually feels better, in my opinion, than if I did like straight lines. One of the best advice I was given by someone randomly at Colossal Con was the human body has no straight lines. And I've really kind of like taken that to heart because I feel like a lot of the work I did prior to that had a lot of straight lines in the anatomy. And it was just like some random onlooker that was like, hey, just so you know, like a lot of your drawings look really stiff. And I think part of it's because uh, the human body really doesn't have straight lines. And it was like unexpected critique, but like very much welcomed. I was like, hey, you know what? You're right. And I think as soon as you try to treat your art as if someone else did it, it becomes very easy to uh, critique it or receive crit critiques constructively because then you don't feel almost this attachment to it. You're allowing yourself to detach a bit. All right, let me look at Muka again. I feel like I'm hitting that lull where I'm like, ooh, I need to find some, some good hands. Um, I'm actually going to also go to Barnes & Noble before I go to Subway today because I am in the latest issue. I don't know if you guys get Imagine FX or if that's something that I mean, even you know about, but it's kind of um, a magazine that I have been wanting to get in kind of my whole life, or at least since I was a librarian at the school that I went to because we would receive these uh, magazines and I would be the one to unwrap it and... I got to look through it, and it was just all these artists that I were very much inspired by, and it was always a goal of mine that if I I made in the art world, I'd want to be an Imagine FX, and then hopefully inspire someone else the way that that magazine inspired me. So I was actually featured in this month, and I was giving 15 sketching tips. So if you get Imagine FX, you will see that near the back where the traditional section is. Oops, can you, sorry, I forgot that you might not even be able to see what I'm drawing. I feel like there definitely should be prominent hands near the heart the quote-unquote heart of the creature. I'll have to figure out about that, though. We thank you, Claire King, for following I guess another tip I can have, or I can say while drawing hands is, try your best not to focus on details too soon. Try to really block it out, because if the block doesn't feel good, the block out, then the detailing will just essentially polish a turd. And you want to make sure that your foundation is the best that you can create it before moving on.
Um, Fem says, maybe some of the hands are pointing to certain keys, trying to get the person to pick that one. Oh, oh, that is a great idea. Um, well, thank you, Pablo Lesser, for following. Oh, that's a great idea with the hands up. Good job, fam. Maybe even some are like holding a specific key. Like, oh, you should pick this one. such a good idea. I also have like this ring of hands around the key ring being like this one, this one. Uh, Kaylinian Cooper says, would you ever create a castle or cathedral hybrid monster? Yeah. Um, I mean, architecture is not my favorite, but I always tell other people they should challenge themselves. So, you know, your own advice is something you should also take <laughs> and it's something that uh, I should do oh man I can do so many sensitive looking hands that are like holding the key kind of like the idea of like a couple that are very like palm out It's almost like tempting you with all these keys. Uh, more or less says, do the people of the magazine come to you and ask if you want to join or do you give them a theme idea and how's that work? Um, I have, I've actually been contacting Imagine Facts for a while. I think it's only recently they, they decided to really give me a shot. But let me tell you, I've, I've been applying for a while. Maybe, maybe so that I would just stop applying, they just let me in. They're like, okay, let this kid do one so that we don't have to hear from him again. <laughs> um, but yeah, they ended up actually contacting me in the end for this one. Ironically, even though like I, I feel like I've submitted so often to them, it was actually them in the end that contacted me being like, hey, this is the, the thing that we want you to do, blah, blah, blah. Can you make that happen? And we did. I almost am curious if I want other arms holding the key ring. I'm not sure about that yet. I'm even, I'm not really digging this actually. As soon as I added it, I was like, ah. And I never want to feel like I'm adding one that I'm like not completely satisfied with.
And I also kind of like the idea of maybe some arms don't want to get pecked. Maybe they don't want to look attractive because they don't want to give up what they're holding. Such a fun composition, but also super complicated. Why, well, thank you for following. Hmm. <laughs> Definitely know I'm getting close to that point where I'm like, oh, I just, I need to take a break from drawing hands. But I got... 20 more minutes. I'm going to push through here. Um, Fem says, maybe it has a giant keyhole or key where the heart is. Oh, that's interesting. Do I put one on the face? Oh, I kind of like the idea of there being like the, the one that unlocks the actual creature. Hmm. <laughs> ideas, ideas, ideas. And I guess I don't mind including more elbows and stuff either. Hmm. <laughs> uh, Girl Sean says, did you f apply to work with Imagine FX? Oh, I, yeah, I answered that one. Jim says, favorite music or artist? What might influence this piece? Um, I'll probably listen to very classical music just to get me in that mindset of very soft and elegant uh, renaissance-y. But my favorite band of all time is Seeger Rose. Um, songwriter is probably, or singer, or like pop musician, I guess, would be Lana Del Rey. But I like cheery music, anything that has like a, a good working beat, something I could put in the background while I'm drawing. I listen to a lot of that nowadays. Hmm. <laughs> Maybe, it, you know what, this is a good point where I'm going to take a step back from it. Let me look at it for a second. <laughs> I like what we have going on. It's like complex, but in a good way, kind of the way I was imagining it to be. <laughs> okay, I think I'm going to have another arm holding it here. Oh, 
Um, Adrian says, have you ever showed your work as part of an art show or an art gallery? I did. It was in Milwaukee, and it was in June. Um, Cactus says, maybe one hand could hold more keys or more hands could hold one bigger key. Maybe. I kind of like the idea of all the keys being on the key ring, so like it's not cheating the actual challenge or the fate of whoever chooses it. I kind of like the idea of it just being super emotionless of a creature. Um, tur, tur, tur. Luva says, instead of a face, a bigger keyhole, and one of the arms is holding one key for that keyhole, and only you can get to it once you have unlocked all the other arms. It's like the original key. I do like the idea of an original key. I want to figure out a way that we can showcase that without it being on like a separate key ring, though. Um, Girl Sean says, how do you apply? Emailing someone or do they have an application area? Uh, I just emailed the editor-in-chief over and over again, and back in the day it was someone different. So now it's Claire, and yeah, I was emailing her a couple times too. Uh, Mighton says, would them not looking attractive include things like moles, discoloration, polyps, warps, broken fingers, etc.? Uh, maybe... Um, I kind of like the ones that aren't as attractive, just being like disinterested. So like they don't care if the person walking up picks their hand to be the hand to unlock or not. Like they just do not care. Um, Cactus says, "Can you please tell me a short uh, thing behind this piece? I wasn't here last time." Okay, so for any of you that are new, um, let me just do a quick spark notes of this. So essentially, I wanted to draw a creature with a lot of arms. That was the initial prompt, and then last week. Uh, I will upload it to YouTube, the stream, but essentially the you guys came up with this really clever story of each arm or this creature being like a thief and every arm having a keyhole. And if you pick, if you have the key to unlock that hand, you'll unlock all the treasures that that, that hand holds. And that could, I mean, at first we were thinking maybe it was just purely physical, but then we were like, well, what if they held a lot of like information or treasures that weren't physical matter, and maybe you would unlock that as well, so like the power that the hand contained. But this creature has a giant key ring that will just have like a ton of keys on it. And you walk up to this creature down here, as you can see, and it's up to you to pick a key and pick a hand that you would like to unlock. And uh, if you guess the right key, well, thank you, Total Havoc. Oh, there's a lot that followed. Well, thank you, guys. Um, if you pick the right key to the hand, then you unlock everything that that hand unholds. If you pick the wrong key, the creature gets to rip off one of your arms and adds it to his growing collection. So it's kind of like Dark Fable, and I like that idea. Oh, well, thank you, Nen. Oh, that was Nen that rated me. Thank you so much, Nen. Nen is someone that inspired me very much when I went to a workshop last year and it was this whole story with a clownfish and a lion and that's why I created clownfish pins so huge shout out to Nen if you don't know her stuff go check her out I think she's a fantastic artist and very funny <laughs> okay so I think I have what like 10 minutes left of the stream I'm gonna try to draw a few more arms here and I think we're gonna call this one done or at least this dream done why well, thank you. Hey, yay. Hey. Thank you, Nan again. <laughs> you guys are you're too funny. Or you know what? Maybe I'll do the arms. I'm trying to think of like what would be a good last stream arm to draw. Oh, and another thing that we have to focus on is inside of the key ring here. Well, thank you to all these new followers. I want to allude to a lot of arms and hands as well, but I don't want it to be too distracting. So I think the key ring itself is going to be really dark in contrast so that the arms really shine through. Why, well, thank you, everyone who's been following. <laughs> awesome. Keep it going. <laughs> Nen rated me. Did you show him the jingle? Oh, I didn't. I guess the last thing I got that wasn't from an artist was this boy. Hey, Jingles. I guess that's true. Studio Kitsu. This little baby. 
usually don't buy anything fan art, but that thing was too adorable not to. Hmm. You know what? Maybe to end the stream off, I'll start putting a little more detail in this arm here. So I'm going to work on this hand. And I really should warm up with like a, a separate arm each time I work on this drawing. So it kind of gets me in the right mindset. So basically, when I go to render something, especially with like this hand, one, I'm choosing this hand because it's on the left side of the page so I can prevent smudging as much as possible. But two, because I don't have to worry about it. Could you wait like 10 minutes? Because then the stream will be done. Oh, I'm going to stream when you're done. Okay. So basically what I do is I kind of pick out the important prominent areas of the subject matter I'm working on, and I just kind of darken them. And then from then, I'll go ahead and kind of add more finesse to it. So the thing that I like about my initial drawing, though, is I feel like it captured a lot of... <laughs> well, thank you, guys. <laughs> captured a lot of the proportions that I was looking for. And it becomes a lot easier to shade it when I feel like I have a good underlying structure. So I feel like next week's stream will probably be more interesting for a lot of you guys that want to just see a hand shaded completely. Because I know just drawing like the outlines may not be the most uh, exciting. Um, even rendering hands I feel like may not be the most like compelling of something to watch, but it will definitely give you guys a better idea of how I go about rendering pretty much anything. Um, Girl Sean says, I'm streaming tonight to the Wind Waker soundtrack. Hey! I feel like I might do that too. I know I have a important call with a bunch of our other con artist friends at um, later, but I want to work on this drawing a lot more tonight. Because once you get into a zone, I feel like it's hard to break that as an artist. Because you get so wrapped up in it, it's almost like you're, it's hard to turn your brain off then. So the, this arm that I'm drawing, I actually took a reference photo of my own arm. So I have that pulled up on my second monitor right here. I'm able to really get some of those subtle details that I think I wouldn't normally get if I didn't have the reference with me. Um, Fem says, maybe the key ring was the actual key to the creature itself, and it started adding these other keys and arms to distract people from the real key. Oh, I like that. Yeah, maybe like when I actually sell this as a print, I'll make the real key gold. Because all my large prints I now lace with uh, gold ink. So I think that would be like a cool little nod to our creature. And it's secrets that it keeps. And for these knuckles, I really want to emphasize the knuckles. I think that can make a hand look so much more dynamic if you just give it more of a pronounced knuckle. Maybe make it like the least expensive key, like in Indiana Jones. Oh, I like that. Hey, Nen. Heading home now. I'm glad I got to catch you actually streaming. Yeah, well, thanks for coming for a little bit. I'm still waiting to hear what cool project idea you have in your head. So hit me up whenever you want. Yeah, I'm definitely, I know that this, this piece is going to be really exciting to shade. So like once I have a good foundation for myself set, I can literally just render for hours. So I'm looking forward to when I can just sit in front of a TV upstairs and just render the heck out of this drawing. 
because there comes a point where I don't even really need reference anymore. I have pretty much the foundation set for me to work with. And a lot of next week's stream, I believe, will be more focused on uh, shading these things out quite a bit more. And especially these two hands holding the key ring will be probably the darkest, most prominent hands. And then everything else will still have somewhat of a shading to it, but it won't be nearly as dynamic in uh, this value contrast as these two. Yeah, and whenever anyone asks me, how do I shade? Really small circles. Let's do that over and over and over and over again. Hey, Key, can you show me how you raid? Um, I'm not sure if you can see Okay. I will wait till Key starts streaming then to do this raid. But thank you, everyone, that is following. Like I said, I do these streams every Wednesday at 2 p.m. Central Time. I stream for about two hours. And now I'm going to make these streams more of a collaborative stream where you guys can, like, throw ideas at me and I could possibly include them into the drawing. And that's what basically created this creature. And I'm kind of in love with how this creation became a reality. Literally just from like me wanting to draw a bunch of arms, I feel like you guys helped me create something that I'm also really proud of the story behind it too. And I'm definitely not taking credit for it either. I, I feel like it was very much a collaborative effort between a lot of you guys that shared your ideas on here. Hmm. I have a feeling this whole hand's going to be really dark. <laughs> I just keep like teasing the fact that it's lighter now, but I know this is going to get a lot darker. And I'm going to do the same thing for this front arm then, too. I want there to be very prominent knuckles. And as soon as Key gets up and running on her stream, I'm going to raid it and get over there. I'm going to head over to Barnes & Nobles, and I'm going to get Subway. <laughs> That's going to be my night before I do this call. Uh, Jim says, can you explain more of the little tiny circles for shading? Do you ever deviate from the circles and make random marks? Absolutely. Like every now and then I'll do kind of the Villarte style of rendering where it's like these bigger, almost like brush strokey type mark making. Um, I would say little circles is essentially when I'm just pushing and like scribbling in a small circle and I'm just like lightly building the value up slowly but surely. And then I guess everyone knows kind of cross hatching and uh, those techniques, which every now and then I'll do as well. Uh, Westo Paint says, how do you protect your drawings and prevent smudging? Do you spray them? I used to draw on graphite all the time in high school, but often ended up messing up old drawings. Uh, I'm not a very heavy handed drawer, so it's never really been too much of a pr problem for me, but I will say is like just starter tips. Don't uh, don't try to go too dark too soon. I try to give myself a good foundation like this, especially on a complex drawing, before I even go in and add any more like value. And then secondly, try to work left to right if you're right-handed, and vice versa if you're left-handed. That way, I can draw everything and shade it very much to my liking on the left area, and I can just work my way right and down and I'll never have my hand on top of that drawing where I used to draw. So I don't know, I, I would say I'm just, I'm usually not one to 
smudge to begin with because I'm not moving my hand that often anyway. So just be very aware of how often you move your hand in your, in your art. Um, Cactus says, maybe make one hand holding the key ring darker and black than the other white. Oh, so it was like a yin-yang approach. Oh, I kind of like that idea. No, a part of me still wants to figure out, like, do I make the key ring super bright, super dark? I have a feeling I'll make it super dark. Just to really kind of hone in the viewer's eye again to the central area. Thank you, the biggest, for following. Uh, I think that's a easy trick to kind of lead the viewer's eye to wherever you want. And it's one that I use very often in my work. So just know contrast can be the biggest an easiest way to direct the viewer's eye to wherever you want simply based on the contrast because of how much our eye by human nature is simply attracted to contrast. So play with that. Knowing that knowledge like will add it to the places you really want the viewers to see. Oh yeah, I think I'm gonna end off the stream. Um, lastly, Digi says, do you use a diffuser? Uh, I do not, no. I just literally will do this over and over and over. I should, I have one, um, those little paper stubs to blend. Maybe on this drawing I'll experiment in a few areas, but for the most part, no. Uh, let me ask, Key, have you figured it out yet? I'm gonna rate it to her stream now. Kimber. I don't know where she is. So you guys want, my roommate Key is about to stream. I'm gonna rate it over there. And then if you want, I'll, I'll probably take a, a photo on my Instagram of where this is at by the end of the day. In case you would like to see where it's at. And then Von Art on Instagram. Ah, thank you, Sharfa. Okay, I'm gonna copy and paste this. Okay, so before I go, I just want to say thanks everyone for coming to this live stream. I do these every Wednesday at 2 p.m. Central Time, and I work for about two hours, and I am here to answer any comments or questions. Next week, I will probably do some more final kind of finesse on a, I want to do like three to five hands next week, where, where I literally take it from this stage to something even more complete than this hand. So that's kind of my agenda for next week. So if you want to see that, that's what I'll be working on. And as always, I'm here to answer any comments or questions you may have. And I guess, yeah, just overall, thank you guys for coming to this live stream. I mean, it definitely is the reason I keep doing this is having